Hi, Kate and Internet. A little dark outside. Um, thought I'd give a little bit of a life update. Um, just waiting for a bus for the next five plus minutes, so they're on a bit of a timer. Um, oh, just came back from the U.S. for a little while. I had a work conference and. Also, more work updates. Um, so, for those that may not have seen the previous videos, I am being either let go or forced relocated. Because the company I work for do not want me to live in Norway. It's kind of the whole reason why I was working for them. <sighs> I am just not used to holding a camera like this anymore. Um, so, let's see. What do you need to talk about? So, um, yeah, I've gotten a little bit more information. Uh, so far, the only relocation target that I've been offered is Denmark. I have, not counting the airport at least, never been to Denmark. Um, so, all I know about it is what I can research online. Um, Danish is a scary language to me because it's similar enough to Norwegian where I'm absolutely going to mix things up. Constantly. Uh, overall, I was offered a 10% raise. Cost of living is approximately similar, although I'm noticing that housing is a little more expensive, so... Ugh. Um, let's see... Otherwise, the company that I currently work for basically ignored almost every other country on the list. Uh, they only looked at the first three, which was Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. Uh, they said no to Sweden, because apparently it was effectively the same as Denmark, but a worse deal or something. I don't know. I wasn't given any information on that. And then um, Finland, the company doesn't have an office in. So. That was a no, but they ignored the other seven countries on my list, including Scotland, which I specifically wanted them to take a look at. So I'm currently waiting to hear back on that one. I have been waiting for a while now. They keep delaying when they're going to respond to me. I'm told that I will have a status update by the end of the week, but that's the third deadline that they've given me. They Previous deadline was the start of the week, and the previous deadline for that was the end of last week. So, um, don't think I'm going to actually get that this week. Speaking of deadlines, um, let's see. So, assuming that I accept termination, my last day will be the 1st of November. Uh, from there, I will get two months of pay as severance, and that's it. If, and I had until uh, next Friday, so that's is that the 25th? Yeah, I think that was the 25th of October, to decide whether I would accept relocation or be terminated. Which, given how much they're dragging their feet, I kind of told them I need a little bit more time than that because I'm not giving you any. So I will instead have to decide on the day that would be my last day. So, fun! This is exhausting, by the way. I'll continue this video when I'm not waiting for a bus. Uh, I voted? Sort of? Um, so, I am still an American citizen, and as a result, I still have the right to vote. In fact, I have the right to vote in the state that I left, which means that my vote counts as though I'm still living in Wisconsin. Um, so... I get to vote in federal elections, but not state elections. And then, after one year of living here, I think it's one, could be two, doesn't matter either way, uh, I can vote in local elections here in Norway. Yay. So I just mailed off my absentee ballot. I have tracking information for the absentee ballot. It should arrive with like at least a week to spare, if not two. So, 
yeah, votification. No fun sticker and definitely no electoral baked goods. Although, given that my closest post office is in fact in a grocery store, I could always buy some baked goods, I suppose. Anyway, back home. And then all hell broke loose. Hello again, Internet. Um, this is actually two days after I recorded the previous section that you just saw, because I actually did record, fully record the entire video. I started editing it yesterday, so the day after I recorded it. And then, as I said, all hell broke loose. And all of a sudden, uh, almost everything that I recorded in the next section, which was half an hour long, is no longer valid. So, where to even begin? Um, let's see. So, at the time of recording yesterday, I had basically three options that I knew of. Well, really four. I'll get to that in a bit. But it was basically accept my termination and find a new job in Norway, uh, be relocated to Denmark, or be relocated to Scotland. And I had all of the information for Denmark already, and I was waiting for the information in Scotland, which the company that I work for has been delaying giving me that for a while now. It was supposed to be given to me in two days, and I finally got the information yesterday, which was two weeks. This wouldn't be as big of a deal if it weren't for the fact that they were supposed to have me decide by the end of next week. So I was going to have like five business days to make a decision that would impact my life forever, so that was garbage. Um, I did get them to delay that decision time until the first, which is coincidentally my last day in the event that I accept termination. So, not great. Well, I got a contact back from my HR representative for the company that bought the company that I work for, which is one of the two people I've been working with for trying to figure out all of this, and long story short, I cannot be relocated to Scotland. So, I really only have three options at this point, which is, and really it's two, but I'm adding the third option just because it's technically an option that I'm not willing to accept. Option one, accept my termination. Uh, my last day would be the 1st of November, and then I would be paid out for the rest of the year as severance pay. Um, if I can find an equivalent job in Norway, that would be a reasonable option. I'll get to that in more detail in a while. Option two is accept a relocation to Denmark. I would be receiving a 10% raise. Uh, that does include my annual raise, which would be about 3% of that. And I have the benefits package. The benefits package are much more attractive than it is for me right now mostly because I'm being paid, or the benefits that I receive for living in Norway are the absolute bare minimum required by law, whereas what I would be receiving in Denmark is significantly above the bare minimum required by law, so that part's nice. Or technically option three, which is relocate back to the U.S. So I want to talk through these, so let's talk about it, but I'm going to need to write them down first because this time I need notes. Okay. Finish creating some notes. So, Denmark. Pros. Um, the offer that I received is effectively a 10% raise compared to what I am currently working. I say effectively because there's both currency conversion and cost of living conversions in there, not to mention the benefits are unequal. So, I did a little bit of analysis, and let's say, for instance, what I make right now is 100 generic currency units, or GCUs. Um, I'm using these instead of actual currency numbers because people get weirded out by that type of thing. I don't understand why. I'm happy to talk about that, um, and I think it's to my advantage to do so. But let's say I make 100 generic currency units today. Um, with moving and with looking at expenses, I would be basically making 111 generic currency units by moving to Denmark. Um, if you also factor in the fact that I actually have a real pension, currently in Norway I have a 2% pension, which is the minimum required by law, and in Denmark I would have a 9.4% pension, and an extra 7.4% to my salary, effectively, and we get about an 18% 
or so I would be making 118 generic currency units. And there's a reason why I'm using that scale, and we'll get to that later. Uh, in addition, we have the fact that Denmark actually, or at least the city that I'm looking to move to, has a has better weather than Bergen. Um, I don't know if you've noticed in my videos. I don't record outside very often because it's mostly rainy. Um, Bergen rains 250 plus days a year and rains a lot of rain at that. Um, Aarhus, which is where I'm looking to move to, rains about, was it like 120 days a year, 130, something like that. It's considered rainy for Europe, but that's more like South Florida level of rainy, not rainiest part of North America level of rainy, which is effectively the same level that Bergen has. Uh, in addition, the weather is generally just as mild there as it is here, which is to say it drops a little bit below freezing during winter, and it can get warm for a couple, like hot style of warm for a couple of weeks a year, and that's about it. So all that sounds great to me. Uh, we also have better worker protections for me. So, fun fact, um, Norway has worker protections. And the worker protections are really strong to me, given that I'm American. And it's the whole reason why I've been given notice and being given the option of relocating. is because they're, the company I work for is legally required to. Uh, they are required to give me, in Norway, they're currently required to give me one month's notice. And I'm required to give them one month's notice in exchange. Once I finish my third year of working in Norway, that notice period goes up to two months. Uh, whereas in Denmark, if I were to be given notice, I would have to be given three months of notice. And that notice period goes up to four months at the third year. And I will be hitting the third year by the end of this year. So that part sounds nice. Um, otherwise, regulations between Norway and Denmark are very similar, namely, you cannot be fired without cause, unlike the, most of the United States. Um, there has to be a reason, and you have to give, like, a best effort attempt at trying to not fire the person in the event that they are... It, and not eliminate their position, or not cause them to... What am I trying to say? Um, basically, if you have to let somebody go for a reason that has nothing to do with them, you have to try your best to find another position for them, which is the situation that I'm currently in in Norway. It's the same thing in Denmark. So, okay, slightly better worker permissions. Uh, there was something else. Hold on. Oh, right. Holidays. So um, I would have the same vacation time in Denmark as I would have in Norway, which is 25 days. It's the legally minimum or minimum legal requirement for both Denmark and Norway, which blows me away how much higher it is outside of the U.S. The U.S.'s legal minimum for those Europeans that are watching is zero days, um, and typical is usually 10. And in fact, if I was working for the U.S. office, I would only have 15. So... Yeah, not great. Um, so I have the same vacation time. What's different is the holiday time. So there's a similar situation in Denmark that there is in Norway, where all of Denmark's holidays are all lumped in at roughly the same time. The main difference is that their last national holiday is in June, whereas Norway's net last holiday is in May, sometimes June, depending on when Easter falls, basically. Uh, and then the next holiday is Christmas. Uh, that part's the same in Denmark. The main difference is that I get five floating holidays as well. Those floating holidays, I don't know the rules of how to use them yet. I don't know if they count as full vacation time. I don't know if they have, can only be used certain times of year or I have to give more notice. Either way, that is a lot better than my current situation where all of my holidays line up with times that I don't particularly have, like... I take vacations to visit the U.S. during times that people can actually take time off of work. And uh, one of the things that I do every year is that I visit for Thanksgiving. It's actually an important holiday to me because it's the time I get to spend with my friends. I can't 
do that as easily while I'm living in Norway. I actually take a bunch of time off around Thanksgiving specifically for that reason. So, yeah, um, that part's nice. And on top of the fact that accepting relocation is obviously going to allow me to continue to make money and continue to, you know, have a job, not have a giant hole in my resume, um, generally beneficial things with the idea of not being let go. But there are problems, and the problems are massive. I want to try to emphasize something for people that are watching this. None of my options are good. Like, there are, there are positives to each of the decisions that I could make, but the negatives all outweigh the positives. Every single one of these scenarios is generally negative for me. So let's start about Denmark. The number one problem with moving to Denmark is that I am on a worker visa. I am no longer... So in Norway, I'm currently on a family visa, which is to say my partner is Norwegian, I am married to my partner, and my visa that I obtained myself, or technically my partner obtained with me, uh, allows me to reside in the country of Norway. I renew it every two years, and as long as I am still capable of affording to live here, basically, I can keep living here. I don't get kicked out or anything. Um, they can kick me out if I don't renew my visa, or if I were to get a divorce with my partner. But it doesn't matter about my job situation. As long as I can afford to live here, they're like, cool. That changes with Denmark. With Denmark, I would have a worker's visa. Worker's visas means that if I suddenly lose my job for any given reason, that could be reasons that have to do with my decisions, reasons that have to do with my um, employer's decisions, or reasons that have completely out of both of our controls, I have six months to get a job, otherwise I'm kicked out. Um, employment visas are good for four-year periods of time. My employers, and it takes four years to be able to apply for a permanent residency. There is a possibility I might be able to get a residency visa from my partner, because my partner, being Norwegian, has the right to be able to live and work anywhere in the Nordic countries. My partner does not work, but um, it is possible. I mean, my partner will be able to get a visa to live in Denmark without much of an issue. It's, as far as I can tell, it's the equivalent of a change of address form. Um, so that's not a big deal, and I might be able to get a visa that way, which would be good, because then I'm in the same situation I am in Norway, which is I don't have to depend on my employer to be able to live in the country that I live. If not, that's where everything goes to hell. Because all of a sudden, one, my employer is effectively controlling where I live. Two, after four years, I would need to apply for permanent residency. I can get a four-year extension on a worker's visa, as far as I can tell. But it doesn't really go beyond that, and my employers already mentioned that they would not be particularly happy about doing much more than one extension anyway. I get kicked out of the country at that point, because permanent residency requires me to have mastery of, or more mastery of the Danish language, which brings me to problem number two. I don't know Danish at all. Now, Danish is somewhat similar to Norwegian, somewhat similar to Swedish, somewhat similar to Icelandic. The Nordic countries all have similar languages to the point where, um, like, I don't happen to have one handy, but ingredient lists on foods here in Norway usually combine Danish and Norwegian into the same listing of ingredients because the written languages for Danish and Nynorsk for Norwegian are similar enough where they're effectively the same language with different spelling. Uh, think like the difference between British English and American English on spelling. It's slightly more divergent than that because reasons, but that's about as close as to a comparison that I can get. But spoken is completely different. Spoken is completely weird to me. I have zero inkling what anyone is saying in Danish. And I'm probably not going to for a long time. The problem with that I have with learning languages is usually that I'm bad at it. Um, my ability to listen to what people say is generally deficient. I have hearing problems 
that typically show up in the range of a human voice. So what I hear is generally muffled, especially when my ears are clogged like they are right now. Um, I basically have a medical condition where eventually earwax completely covers up the ear canal, and I will actually start feeling a suction feeling. It's kind of like if you covered your head ears like this. That's basically what I hear like if I don't get them cleared out. But getting them cleared out, I mean, but there's a difference between they've been freshly cleared out and they're completely clogged. Everything in between, I have problems understanding what people say. There's a reason why, if you ever notice when I'm talking to somebody in person, I look at their lips. It's because I'm partially lip reading to be able to figure out what they're saying. That's impossible for me in another language right now. I have to translate it in my head, and since I cannot figure out how to make certain sounds in Norwegian, or specifically, it's not that I don't know how to make the sounds, it's that I can't tell the difference between certain sounds in Norwegian. And I suspect the same thing's going to happen with Danish. On top of all of that, so basically Danish has all of the problems of me learning Norwegian, except that my partner isn't Danish. My partner's Norwegian. So my partner can help me with Norwegian, not so much with Danish. And now I'm going to be learning a very similar language to what I already know, which means I'm going to get heavily confused. I was already getting marginally confused between Swedish and Norwegian as it is, where Swedish and Norwegian sound similar to each other and written completely different. So that also brings up my partner, who this is their huge problem with this. There's a reason why I live here in Bergen. It's because of my partner. Uh, Kreatir lives in the region, shall we say, prior to me moving here. They lived in the region, and they still have a cabin out in the middle of nowhere. No, it's not adjacent to nowhere, Kreatir. It is the middle of nowhere. I'm sorry. There is no civilization for kilometers other than farms and a couple of houses. Anyway, um, let me get something to drink. That cabin has Kreatir's cats. And currently, they go back and forth frequently. Whenever I record these, I'm usually recording them when Creator's not here. That way, I'm not disturbing them while I'm talking. Regardless of the time of day, they might be trying to sleep or trying to play video games or anything like that. So they're currently at the cabin, as it is right now. And they travel back and forth between Bergen and the cabin. It takes about a total of five hours, I think it is. Five or six, something like that. Um, we're about... 45 minutes to an hour away from the boat dock that they take to leave and go off on a pair of bo or on a boat to a ferry to an hour long long walk home. By moving to Denmark or really moving anywhere outside of Norway, the very first step for them to be able to go back to their cabin is to fly to Bergen. All of a sudden they're, hey look, this is a good chunk of a day trip turns into a bare minimum, this is all day, and more frequently, this is all day plus a part of another day because I have to get a hotel room overnight. Their trips become a lot more expensive, uh, as it is now, I think, boat fare and all of that ends up costing something along the lines of, I don't know, like 12 US, 15 US, something like that. Uh, all of a sudden, we're buying a flight, so it's closer to like 300 US, uh, and it's a lot more stressful. I mean, you're flying rather than anything else. And it's not like there's a closer airport to their home. They still have to fly to Bergen. And the Bergen airport is effectively further away from the boat dock than where I currently live. I actually live m much closer to the airport than I do to the boat dock. So it's not that much further, but it's yet another step. There's all of the waiting for luggage and all of that crap and... and yeah, this is really bad for Kreatir. Admittedly, Denmark is nowhere near as bad as other countries could have been. Well, Sweden would have been better, but still, it's not as bad as it could have been, but it's still not great. Speaking of not great, uh, Denmark doesn't have a public unemployment insurance system, which is bizarre to me because even the U.S. has one. Um, so what I mean by that is that if you were to lose your job in the United States, most states, ha or I think every state has it, but states differ as to how it works, have an unemployment system, which is to say, hey, look, you got laid off. Here's a bit of money to be able to tide you over while you're trying to find a job. 
and usually in the US it's a small amount of money. In Norway it's actually a fairly large amount of money. Either way, you are paid so you can make sure that you're able to have continuity of housing, continuity of food, and so on while you start trying to search for a job. Unemployment is really important to me because I have lost several jobs. I have never been fired in my life, but I have lost several jobs due to a uh, position being eliminated or um, me being laid off. And I mean, I'm kind of in the situ that same situation right now. Denmark doesn't have a public unemployment system. You have to pay for it. It's effectively as though you are taking out insurance, similar to short-term or long-term disability, which I do actually have covered. Um, I have to take out insurance for unemployment, which is going to cost a significant amount of money. From what I've read, it's close to 8% of salary. Um, I don't know how accurate that is because I don't have information on it, unfortunately. And one of the things that I've learned is that they're frequently associated with various trade unions, so most likely I'll be joining a union anyway. So I'll figure it out when I join the union and find out how much dues plus unemployment insurance is. Um, let's see. Another downside, terrain. So I'm sure a lot of you are aware Norway is not exactly flat. Uh, it is very mountainous. Um, I live, Bergen is the city of seven mountains, except that there's 11 of them and nobody knows which seven they're referring to. Denmark is not mountainous. Denmark is flat. As flat as South Florida flat, which is to say, there's not much of terrain at all. This isn't that big of a deal for me. If anything, it's actually a bit of an advantage because I no longer have to worry about stupid hill type situations, which is really nice. But I do miss seeing the beauty, seeing different terrain elevations and so on, in the distance and so on. But for Kreutur, this is a big deal, because they live at the base of a mountain. They currently, here, they live at the base of a mountain, sort of. It's more like a base of a plateau. Um, yeah, not great. Overall, oh, yeah, I forgot about the biggest problem. Moving. So the company that I work for has decided in their infinite wisdom to have a policy that they do not pay for relocation expenses for their employees. Even though I am being forced to relocate by said company, I have to pay all of the relocation expenses out of pocket. As it stands right now, I don't know how much that's going to cost. I requested a quote from a moving company here last week on Friday. We went around to take video slash photos of my apartment so they can give me an estimate. They're supposed to be working on the estimate this weekend. I don't know if that means they're going to get back to me during the weekend. That seems a little weird to me. Or like early next week. But to give you a frame of reference, my move between apartments here was on the order of, I think it was like 1500 US dollars. Um, for reference, I'm having somebody pack and move everything. I do not do this anymore. I have been injured almost every move of my life since I was a child. I do not want to deal with that again. I'm not going to. Not to mention it's not possible for me to in this case anyway. Um, so my move from the United States to Norway, on the other hand, was closer to 30,000 US dollars. I don't know where a move to Denmark is going to be on that line between 1,500 and 30,000 US dollars, but I suspect it's going to be somewhere in the middle or potentially closer to the 30 grand mark. My current estimate, which is a wag or a wild ass guess, is 10 grand. That's a lot of money to throw up front on top of needing to throw down payment, or not down payment, um, security deposit for an apartment or home of some variety. I'm going to need to do the housing search remotely. Housing search is another big downside, um, which means I'm going to probably need to fly over there and put myself up in a hotel for a few nights, myself and creator, I should say, also paying for a cat sitter during that time. I'm going to have some very high expenses all at once. And the company I work for is not going to reimburse any of it. 
yeah, this is awful. Um, this is, as I mentioned, every option that I have is a net loss. All options are bad. So let's talk about the next bad option, which is staying here. So accepting the termination means that I would get effectively two months worth of uh, expenses as severance, or not expenses, uh, two months worth of income as severance. Severance pay in Norway is taxed just like regular income, so I can generally predict how much I'll be making. Um, it'll probably be slightly more because Norwegians pay half of income tax in December for some weird reason. I guess that's technically an advantage of moving to Denmark, is that I don't have the stupid-ass tax system. I mean, it's the same amount of money overall, it's just divided weirdly for some reason. Anyway, um, so by staying here, I basically have income for the rest of the year. Okay, that's actually a reasonable severance package in my mind. But I would still need a job. I definitely don't have the type of money to be able to retire. And I don't think that my alternative pursuits, shall we say. So I have been batting around a novel idea in the back of my mind. I have a few things that I can probably do independently. None of that's going to provide enough of an income. Uh, they're all hobby level in my mind. Which is to say, you don't make money off of it. Or at least not any significant amount of money off of it. So I'm going to need a job. So that's the biggest disadvantage is that I need a new job. And finding a job when you don't speak the native language of the country that you live in is not easy. I have been applying for jobs. And again, this is a public video. My company that I work for that's putting me through all of this garbage knows that I am looking for another job at the same time. This is not a secret. Nothing that I have said has been a secret. Um, I don't really keep secrets like that anyway. Uh, so I need to find another job. And the number of jobs that are available to somebody who speaks Norwegian on a five-year-old kid can speak it better than me level is pretty low. Uh, it gets worse, though, because I would be looking for a job in a specific city, namely Bergen. Because if I moved away from Bergen, yes, I would still be in Norway. Yes, it would be a bit easier than Denmark. But it would be even harder for me to find a job unless if that city was Oslo. And Oslo is extremely expensive without an income increase. Um, it would have a lot of the same problems that moving to... Denmark has, which is the whole transit problem for Kreter. So it doesn't really help if I leave Bergen. I would almost certainly need to leave my apartment, though, because IT workers don't get paid very well in Norway. So my best bet when it comes to finding work would be finding work at another American large corporation. By finding work in another American large corporation, I would be being paid more like an American rather than like a Norwegian, like I am right now. Or, to specify, I'm currently paid more like an American than a Norwegian. Um, in order to be able to afford my current life. Because I've mentioned this whole income thing before, back when I was living in Madison. I was doing fairly well. I was saving money left and right. I... My expenses were fairly fixed outside of food and um, play money, for lack of a better way of phrasing it. Spending money, that's the correct term. Uh, my expenses didn't really go up all that much, say, at the start of the pandemic or anything. So I was able to save a fairly large amount of money. And the reason for that is because I owned a house. My mortgage payments were predictable. Um, and they were going to be coming to an end. In fact, uh, if I had continued to own that house... I think the end of next year would have been my end of mortgage. Yeah, it would have been something along those lines. So, I was able to save a lot of money. Here in Norway, not so much. Uh, for one, I took a fairly large pay cut when I moved to Norway. And two, the cost of living here is significantly higher than it is in Bergen. And three... The things that I do need to spend money on are a lot more variable here, namely rent. Rent increases. My rent is, in fact, increased by 3% uh, 
as of the end of this month or end of next month. Either way, um, my rent is going up by 3%. I have food expenses that have skyrocketed due to the fact that I live in Norway and almost all of our food is imported, which means due to the Norwegian coroner's weakness, things cost a hell of a lot more money than they used to. Like my food budget, even though there's two people now instead of one person, my food budget is over tripled. <laughs> That's not right. And my partner is still spending money on food on top of that. It's kind of nuts. And I'm also eating out less overall. So anyway, um, so yeah, I am looking at this and then looking at what salaries I might be able to get by looking at averages and going, I don't think I can afford my current apartment. Now, it's not like a, well, I have to get out of the apartment at the end of this month or anything like that, but it is definitely a situation where I would have to downgrade my quality of life. And that is something that I have been trying to avoid at all costs throughout all of this relocation process is making my life worse. <laughs> it's already worse due to the fact that I can't just walk up to a person and say hi. It's already worse for lots of other reasons. I don't want it to be worse because I can't make enough money to survive with the current quality of life that I have. And that is a very real risk by moving to another job in Norway. If I can find one at all. Because, as I mentioned, I only speak English. I am admittedly in an industry that can handle only speaking English. Uh, Norway requires Norwegian language proficiency for most industries, and the tech industry is one of the few exceptions. But that also greatly limits as to what I can do because if, let's say, for instance, you were a, you had a company, the company did stuff, they made widgets, they are not a technology company, but they have a need for somebody like me, a technology person. Well, the entire rest of the company needs to speak Norwegian. Why wouldn't you require the tech person to also speak Norwegian? And that's the problem. So I do have uh, job applications out there. I've already been rejected from one. Uh, that one was a little wonky of a job application position anyway. I wasn't even sure if it was still open, and I'm guessing it's not. Other problems. Um, I don't know. I think I've pretty much covered everything for staying here. It is... I'm not going to be able to find a better job than I have right this moment, which means that... Either I'm going to have to start going into the office, which a commute is a major problem for me, because I don't drive, and I live way on one side of town. If the job happens to be on the other side of town, I now have an hour-plus-long commute each direction, which would be awful. Um, increased exposure to COVID as a result of working in office again. Um, likely decreased salary on account of the fact that it's harder for me to find a job. And... You get the idea. Admittedly, I can afford to be unemployed for a while. It's not like I'm going to be broke the month that I get out of my severance package deal or anything like that. But I don't see it being a bunch of bright opportunities either. Then we have technically option number three, which is to move back to Madison or move back to the U.S. I probably wouldn't actually move to Madison proper at this point, but I'm going to use Madison for a comparison purpose because it's the city that I have the numbers for. So I mentioned that I took a large pay cut as a result of moving from Madison to Norway. And I already know that the company I work for would be happy for me to relocate back to the United States. Very happy. They would do a lot of things to get me to relocate back to the United States. So I decided as a thought exercise to take a look at it, basically assuming that my salary would be the same as though I never left the U.S. So taking the raises that I received and applying them to my American salary rather than applying them to my Norwegian salary. And so I would not be making 100 generic currency units. I would be making 134 generic currency units. Units? Units. Um, my cost of living would be significantly lower, and I'd be able to speak English, which 
that was the whole reason why I wanted to move to Scotland was so I can actually speak my own language and socialize with people. And this has been brutal for me living here. Uh, you can see other videos on how badly that's affected me. It's not affecting me as much now, but it's still heavily affecting me. It's not like this is a good situation that I'm in. So I can get a large amount of money. I would have a higher quality of life. I would have all of that except for some, you know, minor problems. The first being Creator. Assuming that Creator would be willing to relocate to the United States, which is not a valid assumption, but I'm making that assumption for the purpose of this argument. Assuming that they were all like, yes, let's relocate to the US. We can't do that right away, because Creator needs a visa. And unlike Denmark, where me getting a visa takes 30 to 90 days, according to the company that I work for, um, it takes a wee bit longer for Creator to get a visa to the United States. The numbers that I saw were 14 to 16 months. The numbers that the company that I work for found to be able to try and shave off as much time as possible was nine or it was uh, 11 to 12 months either way that's probably a year or year and a half of not living with my partner i don't want to do that so the whole reason why creator and i were able to survive our long distance relationship for those that don't know i was in a long distance relationship with creator for 20 years we had been flying back and forth with each other. The whole reason why it worked is that we started long distance. We didn't go from a short distance relationship to a long distance relationship because those have problems. You're used to your partner being right there and all of a sudden they're not and you don't get to talk with them or see them for months at a time in person. Not to mention even online we have time zone differences and so on where we might not be able to talk to each other for multiple days in a row. I don't know if I can handle going back from a short distance relationship to a long distance relationship. I was already having problems with long distance relationship by the time that I was moving to Norway. That's part of the reason for the timing of my move. Then you have other American garbage like healthcare. Um, surprising absolutely nobody, my healthcare needs are a little just a wee bit higher than the average American. Uh, specifically, I have multiple medical issues that require, we'll go with routine healthcare. Uh, unfortunately, some of those issues, as I've discussed in another video, are not currently being met here in Norway. The hope is that they would be met in Denmark, but we don't know for sure. Ooh, there's a magpie. Um, but they would certainly not be met if I relocated to the United States. I know what the health insurance would be like because I saw what my coworkers are being offered. It's not good. It's significantly worse than what I had when I left Madison because I was paying for that out of my own pocket since uh, that was legitimately cheaper for me to do than accepting the company that I work for as insurance at the time. That insurance has significantly changed since then, so I don't have the data on that at all. But it's still not good. <laughs> um, yeah. Then we have transit problems. Um, one of the things in common between Bergen and Aarhus, actually Bergen, Aarhus, and Madison are all very similar to each other, but in particular Bergen and Aarhus is that they are both really, really good at public transit. Um, during the day, I can just walk down to the transit station, which is effectively two blocks away from where I live, and I can just catch a bus and go. I don't need to look at a schedule because I know I can get to downtown or get to one of the two shopping malls that are around me at some point. And assuming that it's not Sunday that I walk down there or super late at night, it's going to be less than 15 minutes before I get a bus, even if I just missed the previous one. And usually it's more like six or seven. In Madison, on the other hand, which, mind you, has an above average transit system for a small size American city, 
One of the reasons why I moved when I did was that Madison was reorganizing their bus system. And I was about to go from having kind of crappy transit to even worse transit, um, where the bus that I was going to be living on was only going to be coming by every half an hour during peak hours and every hour outside of peak hours. Bus singular. One bus. Well, one bus each direction, but one bus. Bergen's the same size city, and I have five bus lines going by my house. And I can also walk to the light rail that runs every seven minutes. Uh, it's a longer walk, it's like 15 to 20 minutes, but still. Um, Aarhus, that section of Denmark is plastered with public transit. Like, I was trying to figure out transit maps and so on to figure out, okay, where can I move to and so on, and I was having problems finding them. Because the transit map is for the entire region. They have better public transit in the middle of nowhere, like in the middle of farms, out, like outer skirts of Aarhus, than they do in downtown Madison. Okay, maybe not downtown Madison, but Madison City proper. And again, Madison is above average. The other cities that I would be potentially moving to would have reasonable public transit, but it's going to be in a very similar boat to Madison. Nobody cares about transit in the U.S. because car brain. And I don't drive. Then you have the giant orange elephant in the room known as the prospect of another Trump presidency or lots of Trump-related things. And that's actually the reason why this is not even being considered by me is that I need to make my decision before the U.S. election. Um, not willing to risk my life on that. And if Trump ends up in power, there is a risk to my life. I'm not going to do that to myself. I'm not going to do that to my partner. I'm not going to do that to my kitties. Speaking of my kitties, trying to relocate my kitties back to the United States, I don't want to. I had already made the decision that my intent was that I would stay in Europe until after my kitties pass away before I would ever consider moving back to North America, because I don't really want to put them through that again. I'm sure that they would be fine. They're still fairly healthy, but don't want to. So yeah, all options are terrible. I don't have a good option. The moving back to the U.S. is really not an option. That's the reason why I didn't really count it as one of my options before. Because it's just awful in almost every way other than I make more money. And I can speak English. And Isin can go back home. You want to say hi, Isin, kitty? Oh, big stretch. It's unfair. The previous recording, Isin and Zun were in there frequently. Um, it's unfair to them that they can't join in this time. So, um, yeah, that's basically where I'm at. All options suck. I hate this. I don't have a choice. I have to make one of these options. Kudit here has already mentioned that they're going to be okay with whatever option that I choose. Um, Admittedly, the U.S. was not an option for me anyway, so they knew that I wasn't going to choose that. Isun is not as good at balancing his own. Even though Isun's more agile. Um, I know Kadir here will be okay with either option that I choose, but both options are going to suck for both of us. And I hate this. Yep, that's all I've got. Um... Yay, depressing life update again. My cats have been all over me, by the way, ever since I got back from the U.S. They usually are, but I've been back for a week now, and nope, you are not allowed on the table, Kitty. Um, I've been back for a week at this point, and they're still all over me, probably because of how depressed I am right now and how stressed I am about everything that I am at the moment. Um, all the health benefits that I had from my Medical leave of absence have, well, not quite all, but most of them have vanished at this point because I've been under too high stress for too long period of time again. So that's fun. I'll talk to you next time, Internet.
and it's in his baby. Oh. Oh.